It's a hot day. It's mid-afternoon. I haven't even had breakfast. All I can think about is a smoothie. Here's what it's going to take. Maxwell 58 Farad Ultra Capacitor. 1000 watt inverter. 500 watt Oster Blender. Pedal powered prime mover. Oh, and of course, two bananas, one apple, one white peach, six ounces of yogurt, a handful of chopped nuts, and orange juice. I can't wait. Got to charge up the capacitor first. Eleven volts. Twelve volts. Turn on the inverter. Fourteen volts. Fourteen and a half, and it's smoothie time. Cheers. I'm Lauren Parker, and this is the Electric Western All Vacuum Tube Theremin. It was a radio operator in World War I, Leon Theremin, who uh, invented the theremin. And I'm trying to sort of faithfully reproduce his method as much as I can. What's happening is that electricity conducts through this vacuum tube like a ray gun and then gets stuck on these little plates inside of this vacuum. Then what you do is you force some of this electricity through a coil. And if you have current going through a coil, it creates an electromagnetic field around it. Then if we attach this up to an antenna, that antenna is going to generate an electromagnetic field. Well, the funny thing about electromagnetic fields, everything has some kind of electromagnetic signature. So as I get closer and closer to this electromagnetic field, my field interacts with its field, and we get electromagnetism traveling. We get, we get capacitance, if you want to get technical about it, um, going in between this field around the antenna, traveling through my body to ground, and vice versa. And that changes the frequency at which this tube is oscillating. Basically, I thought I'd show you all the panning time-lapse device I created out of a, a plug-in clock and a camera that will take photos at intervals. Originally, I mounted the camera directly to the hour hand, but it had its problems. One of which was the weight of the camera, and the other which was that it only went clockwise. So by adding a second shaft here and an O-ring, make it so that I can reverse it, now the device will go the opposite direction. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where somebody's speaking really loudly on a cell phone about something inappropriate or just you just don't want to hear about it? Well, I have, and that's why I designed my own personal cell phone blocker. This pocket-sized device works 10 to 20 feet away and will disable all cell phones. This allows you to use it in uh, churches, movie theaters, cafes, restaurants, pretty much any public location. I designed this cell phone jammer to go with me everywhere, so I wanted to make sure it was pocket-sized. This design is about the size of a deck of cards. It's made of three circuit boards. One of the circuit boards has antennas on it, but to get an extra boost of power, you can attach external antennas. This will make it go up to 20 feet. On top, there's an on-off button. You can charge it over USB, and it's powered by a cell phone battery. Using a spectrum analyzer, we can see exactly how the cell phone jammer works. I've tuned this analyzer to examine the frequencies around the cell phone bands. Each one of these peaks is data being transmitted between the tower and a cell phone. Now, when I activate the cell phone jammer, it sends out a blast of noise that overwhelms the cell phones and causes them to drop the call. I'm like, bailout, smailout, there's no way I'm gonna take a, a pay cut. 
oh yeah, so anyways, the doctor is like, no, it's not, it's not a rash, it's more like a, a fungus, like a, you know, like a, like a fungus that I have to put like a, an ointment or something on it instead of, uh, you know, going to... Hello? 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 Hey. Major funding for Make is provided by Geek Squad.